I'm telling you, if you're going to see God's will, if you're going to see victory come to pass in your life, you are going to have to stand up and get an attitude. And now, here's Andrew. Here's another passage. You, you ought to look this up in your Bible. You ought to mark this in your Bible in Ephesians chapter 4 because most people have misinterpreted this verse. Ephesians chapter 4 and in verse 26, it says, Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down on your wrath. And then the next verse, Neither give place to the devil. Most people have interpreted this, that God realizes we're just human, that we're going to make mistakes and you're going to get angry. And so it's okay as long as you get it confessed and forgiven before you go to bed every night. That is not what this is talking about. This is not putting his stamp of approval on you getting angry as long as the sun is up. <laughs> That's not what this is talking about. This is talking about be angry. There is a godly anger that is not sin. Be angry and sin not because there is a godly type of anger and then don't let the sun ever set on it. Don't ever put it to rest. Keep yourself stirred up. You need to stay angry. Not at people, but at the devil. Amen. You know, we've got a guy, Daniel Amstutz, who does our healing school and he runs our praise and worship also in Colorado. And anyway, he's trained hundreds, thousands of people in prayer ministry and he's got a prayer manual and he's seen thousands of people healed. He's been healed himself. But every once in a while he gets sick and he's heard me say that I don't get sick. I don't believe in getting sick. I've had two colds in 55 years and that was just because I pushed myself and depleted myself so much. Like one time I ministered 40 times one week and then 41 times the next week. And I literally had to crawl into bed and lay there for 24 hours. And I felt pretty good after that. So I went out and split a cord of wood and did too much too fast. And I got a cold. Another time I came back from England after being up for like 36 hours, I think, without sleep. And when I got home, a pond that I had built, the drain was plugged on it. It was ice on the thing. I broke the ice, got under the water after going 36 hours with no sleep. And I got a cold. So I've had two colds in 55 years. And that was because of stupidity, not because of sickness. And so I just don't believe in getting sick. And Daniel could not understand. How do you live without being sick? He just thought it was normal. And so he traveled with me for about six weeks or something. And he determined he was going to figure out why I don't get sick. <laughs> and you know, at the end of the time, he came and told me what he had been doing. And he says, I figured out why you don't get sick. And I said, why is that? And he says, because you hate sickness more than I do. And it's true. I won't get sick any more than I'd go commit adultery. I fight sickness the way I fight sin. There are some of you that you, when you start feeling something, you might say, oh God, please take this away if it be your will for Jesus' sake. <laughs> but you don't fight it. And after all, if you, you know, if you get a, you can take a pill. You can take a pill and get over it. What are you going to do when something comes down the pike that's worse than COVID-19, which was basically nothing but a cold? What happens when you get something that really is incurable and they don't have an answer for it? Oh, well, I'm going to believe God. But you know what? If you haven't believed God for a headache, if you haven't believed God for a toothache, if you haven't believed God for a cold, what makes you think you're going to last against something that's really bad? It's like lifting weights. If you can't lift five pounds, you certainly can't lift a hundred pounds. When are you going to start exercising your faith? Most Christians just, well, I got a headache. I'm going to go take a pill. But you know what? You haven't increased yourself. You haven't exercised yourself unto godliness. You just took the easy way out. And I guarantee you the next thing comes along, you'll take the easy way out and you'll go until it gets to where the doctor says you're going to die. And then you come to a meeting panic and help me to believe. How come you hadn't been believing? I hate sickness. I won't get sick. You can't make me throw up. You can't make me get sick. It just, it isn't going to happen. And I know many of you think, you can't live that way. Well, don't wake me up. This is how I'm living. <laughs> I tell you what, I contend with the devil. 
When I see a promise in the Word of God, I am going to make that promise mine. And I contend. I fight over it. I'll fight for it. And brothers and sisters, I'm saying this in love, but we've got a lot of wimps in the body of Christ that are just looking for the easiest way out and the path of least resistance so you can go watch as the stomach turns on the television so that you can go watch Naked Survivor. I've never seen that show, but I've seen it advertised. I think who would want to watch something like that? Don't raise your hand. <laughs> but I can guarantee if you're watching junk like that on television, no wonder your heart is insensitive towards God and things aren't working. That's not building you up. That's not helping you. You need to... You know, when I was in Vietnam, I, I was a chaplain's assistant and about six months of the time that I was there, I didn't have a chaplain. The chaplain had rotated out and so I was just there by myself. And I was on a fire support base where it was a battalion and my boss was at the brigade level 30 something miles away. So I had nobody on that hill. There was about 120 men on the hill and nobody there was actually my boss. And so I could do anything I want to. And most of the time, I just sat there and studied the Word all day long. But just to break the boredom, I volunteered for bunker guard every night. Most of the time, you only pull bunker guard once a week or something like that. But I volunteered for bunker guard every single night just to have something to do. And I was shocked because you would have four people on bunker guard with three-hour shifts, and did you know, usually, I was the only one that would stay awake. The others, when it was their time, they'd just go to sleep. And we, we had our hill overrun by the Vietnamese. I mean, it was a life and death situation, and yet people would just go to sleep. They didn't take it seriously. I was shocked. And you know, this is exactly what most Christians are doing. We're just sitting here fiddling as Rome burns. We are sitting here just entertaining ourselves, watching junk that isn't changing anything, that's not helping anybody, not realizing that, man, we are in a fight for this nation. You are in a fight for your life. Satan is going about seeking whom he may devour, and the people he can devour are people that don't get stirred up and don't get mad and are willing to accept less than what God has given them. You need to get to a place to where, man, Satan, if you come against me, you are going to regret coming against me. I'm going to take the power that God has given me and I'm going to fight Satan with everything he's worth. You got to get angry. That's what it says. Be angry and sin not. and Don't ever let it go to bed. And then the next verse says, neither give place to the devil. You're giving place to the devil if you aren't angry. If you can see sickness, if you can see disease, if you can see poverty, and you're okay with that, you've just become accustomed to it, Satan's going to devour you. You need to get to where you hate it. I hate that stuff. I hate it with a passion. And I say this in love, trying to help you, but many of you don't hate it. You've grown up with sickness. Many of you have grown up with allergies and it's just become a way of life. You can live with it. It's not going to kill you. So you just put up with it. You just put up with headaches. You know, I think I might have had one or two headaches in 55 years. I'm not sure because I don't know what a headache is. But I've, I, I've, I just don't put up with stuff like that. I don't get sick. I don't believe in being sick. I don't believe in being poor. I don't believe in being depressed. I hadn't been depressed in 55 years and I've had a lot of depressing things happen. But I have a choice and I know what to do when I start feeling depressed. I know how to deal with it and I refuse to give in to it. My son that was raised from the dead, Jamie and I started to have all of the feelings that anybody else would if you had uh, knowledge that your son was dead and I didn't like it. I didn't like the feeling and so I just determined I wasn't going to give in to it and I started praising God 
and worshiping God and saying, God, you're a good God. You did not kill my son. This is not your fault. And I just started worshiping him. And as I did, the joy of the Lord rose up on the inside of me. I was laughing and telling Jamie, this is going to be awesome. <coughs> I've had lots of opportunities to be depressed. I just don't go there. It's your choice. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19, the same day that Moses was saying these things, he says, behold, I call heaven and earth to record against you this day that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both you and your seed may live. He gave you the choice. You get to choose life or death. And many of us are choosing death, not by checking that box and saying, I want death, but we just choose not to get engaged. We, we choose to be passive when God told us to be angry and sin not. And by our passiveness, we are choosing death. We are choosing cursing instead of life. I'm telling you, if you're going to see God's will, if you're going to see victory come to pass in your life, you are going to have to stand up and get an attitude. You are going to have to start saying, Satan, you are a defeated foe. I refuse to allow you to steal from me what God has given me. And you have to get a little arrogant, not in yourself, but in the Lord, that God has provided this. And Satan, you're a zero with the rim knocked off. You're a nothing. And I refuse to allow you to dominate me. You know, here's another verse in Romans chapter 12. And in verse 9, this is the Apostle Paul speaking, and he said, Let love be without dissimulation. The word dissimulation is talking about hypocrisy. Don't be hypocritical. Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. Man, there's a million applications I could make of this. But did you know what? In our society today, when they are taking little kindergarten kids and having drag queens, transvestites come in and do sexual acts, portray sexual acts in front of a four and five year old, when they're having people mutilate their children and they're saying that this is good. And if you don't hate that, if you don't hate people, not the people, but you don't hate what they're doing where they are sitting here and polluting an entire generation. And if you can tolerate that and if you're okay with that, you aren't going to see God's victory in your life. That passiveness, man, just puts a big mark on your forehead and tells the devil, take advantage of me. You need to hate this stuff. You need to hate all of the evil, the wickedness that's going on. And yet there's a lot of Christians that they're just, they have adjusted to it. You're like the frog in the water because it's turned up gradually. You're going to boil to death. You need to, where are you going to draw the line? When are you going to get mad? Yeah, Scripture says in Proverbs chapter 8, verse 13, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogancy and the evil way and the froward mouth do I hate. The froward mouth is talking about a lying, deceiving mouth. If you don't hate lying, you don't fear God. If you don't hate pride, you don't fear God. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil and then it lists these things. We need to hate that stuff. You extend mercy towards the person and pray that they get born again, but you hate what they're doing. You know, when we bought this property that we have in Woodland Park, I tried for two and a half years to get some uh, things done. And there was a housing addition next door that the guy who was the head of the housing addition, uh, he said specifically that he hated me and that he did not want Karis to be able to build there. And he was fighting us with all he was worth. We went through three different lawyers over two and a half years. And I tried to be patient and stuff. And finally, one day as I was driving past that place, I just got mad. And I said, Satan, I command you to stop this. I know it's the devil that's working through this man. And I said, I'm speaking that this devil is getting out of the way. And if that person wants to get rid of this devil 
and get set free, well then fine. But if not, well then that guy's going to get steamrolled with the devil. And I just commanded them to get out of the way. And guess what? We got our permits that week. I remember when Jamie and I were first married and we were uh, struggling financially because of my own stupidity. I thought it was sin for a minister to work a secular job. And so I was trying to live full time of the ministry and I only had five people in my church. <laughs> and uh, we, were, we were going without food. And anyway, the Lord showed me we were going to sell this car and that's how he was going to meet our need. And it had been on the market for three weeks. I had a sign in the car and I admit that it was a dog. It was really a bad car, but... The Lord told me that's how we were going to get our money. And I was, so anyway, one day I went down to the church building and I had just gone as far as I could go. We had to have some money. We'd been days without eating anything and we had to have some money. And I just got to praying. And as I prayed, I got mad. I didn't get mad at God. I knew God wasn't my problem, but I knew that Satan somehow or another was hindering us and I got mad. I mean, I was yelling at the devil, and I was groaning in the spirit. I don't have time to describe that, but that's Romans chapter 8, verse 26 and 27. And I was, I was groaning in the spirit, and I did that for over an hour, and I was fighting with the devil. And after a while, I just, everything broke, and there was just nothing but total peace and joy. It's what I believe the Pentecostals call praying through. You just reach a place to where, man, I've got it. And I went home to tell Jamie, I said, this car is selling today. We're getting our money today. And before I could tell her that, she said, a guy just called and he's going to be at the church in five minutes to buy the car. He says he's got money. And I wasn't even able to tell her what had happened. <laughs> so I went back up there and the guy wanted to buy the car. And I said, look, you got to know how bad it is. It burns a quart of oil every 50 miles. I said, the U joints are going out and we had holes in the floorboard. And this was the kind that when the car shook like this, the keys would come out of the ignition and <laughs> fall. You had to catch it or it would fall through the hole in the floor. And it rained. It came inside when you turned on the heater, water pumped out on your feet. And those are just some of the things. And so anyway, I was telling this guy, it's really, it, it really is, uh, I wanted, I didn't want to take advantage of him. Finally, I made him drive it around the block. We took off in this big pile of smoke. <laughs> and when we got back, he said, can I buy it now? And I said, well, yeah. So anyway, he was giving me the money. And as I was signing the title over, he said, did you know three weeks ago, the first time you put that sign in the car, the first day I told my wife, that's my car. And he says, I don't want to drive it. I want it for parts. And he had a bunch of just cars around his place. And when he told his wife, his wife said, the last thing we're going to have is another old car junker sitting around here. And uh, she had been fighting him over this thing for three weeks. And this was a Saturday and he was watching a football game. He was just sitting there watching television and she just walks into the room during the exact time I was praying and throws the money in his lap and says, go get your old car. And he called. <laughs> and it made me wonder why I waited three weeks before I got like that. And I tell you, you got to stir yourself up or you're going to sink to the bottom. You got to get to where you are contending with the devil is what this says. So I'll tell you, these things that I've been talking about, they are all elements of what it takes to walk in victory. And I'm sure that there's other things that we could put with it. But man, you could go to Deuteronomy 2.24 and just remind yourself of this, to rise up, to take your journey, to cross the river into enemy territory, begin to start seeing with your heart and see that it's already a done deal, that Jesus has already done it. You've already got everything that you'll ever need. And then it's going to come little by little as you're able to possess it and grow into it. And then you got to get this attitude that Satan, I am not putting up with you. I'm walking in God's best. And if you'll do those things and put those things together, I guarantee you, you can see the power of God 
manifest in your life. God wants to bless you more than you want to be blessed. Matter of fact, He's already blessed you. It's a matter of are you going to reach out and take what God has done? Amen. Passiveness in the body of Christ is just rampant and we need to stir ourselves up. And I believe that that's one of the reasons that God brought you here is to share these things with you and to help you. And uh, I promise you, if you would put this into practice, this is a, this has just been a great weekend for God to speak into your life. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. But you got to act on it. Faith without works is dead. So you need to act on the things that you've heard. Amen. Again, please get the teaching from this week and listen to it over and over. And also, this would be a great way for you to share this with somebody else. Amen. I'm, lots of people need to hear this. So, Father, we thank you for bringing us here. Thank you, Father, for the Word of God and the truth that you've given us. Thank you that we will know the truth and the truth will make us free. Father, I believe that you've exposed error, that you've exposed some of the problems in our lives that have kept us from seeing your best come to pass. And so I thank you for that. And Holy Spirit, I believe that you are speaking to people applying this directly to them and helping them to walk in this victory. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we just agree and we receive that and we believe that you are going to bring back to our remembrance all of the things that you have spoken to us this weekend. So, Father, we agree and we receive that in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Praise God. You can also order resources or receive prayer by calling our helpline at 719-635-1111. Our helpline is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. To write us, use the address on your screen. We appreciate your generosity and hope to hear from you today.